Hey everybody from New Hunter Church of Christ, I'm Michael De Silva. Be taking you in here in the next 20, 30 minutes and dealing with our sermon seeker series and we're talking about prayer pointers. I want to give you some pointers. We're going to be starting off by reading the whole chapter of Matthew chapter 6. So if you turn there in your Bibles, just turn to Matthew chapter 6. And let's go to Lord in prayer before we get started this morning. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day and time that we have to share in your word, be able to dive into it so we can be more more uh, assertive for you and do the right thing when we pray and that we just don't get so caught up in the rituals or how we sound and that we lose sight of what the real meaning is. It's just to pray to you in the correct ways without getting so caught up in how we sound or how we want to so other people will view us by what we say because God doesn't hear prayers that, as you say in your as your word says that God don't hear prayers when people just want to be flashy and fragment with their prayers the same way with their give, giving or anything else for that matter so Lord help be with me the preacher here at New Hunter Church of Christ Evangelist to be able to preach us and teach us to people about the very subject of prayer and how important it is for the church. Jesus, in your wonderful name, I pray, amen. Matthew chapter 6. Says, talking about giving here. Says, when you do good deeds. Says, don't try to show off. Says, if you do, you won't get a reward. Says, from your father who is in heaven. It says, when you give to the poor, the needy, don't blow a loud horn. That's what show-offs often do in the meeting places as well as on the street corners. It says, because they are always looking for praise or some kind of award or doing it for some kind of hidden motive. It says, I can assure you that they already have their a reward. Some 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 re, some uh, revelations say just reward, but it says, when you do give to the poor, don't let anyone know about it. You don't tell nobody. And when you help somebody out, don't tell nobody. Then your gift will be given in secret, and your father, who knows what you have done in secret, and he will also reward you for doing so, you know. And the next section is how we pray. Verse 15, or 5. says, when you pray to the Lord, don't be like those show-offs, you know, who love to stand up and pray, you know, and just say a lot of haughty words, and hear themselves talk, you know, and there's, meeting places and on the street corners, as they often do. They do this just to look good. You know, I can assure you that they already have their just reward. It says, when you pray, go into a room alone and close the door behind you. Pray to your father in private. He already knows what is being done in private. And he will also reward you. It says, when you pray, don't talk on and on and on. You, you know, like I was alluding to earlier, using flowery words and fancy things of speech, as people often do, who don't know God. It says, they think God likes to hear long, puffed up prayers. Well, don't be like them. Says your father knows what you already need before you even ask. So you should pray like this Our Father in heaven, help us to honor your very name. Come and set up your kingdom so that everyone on earth will obey you as you are obeyed in heaven. Give us our food for today. Forgive us for doing wrong as we forgive others. 
It says, keep us from being tempted and protect us from evil and the evil one. It says, if you forgive others for the wrongs that they have done to you, your Father who is in heaven will also forgive you. It says, if you don't forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins either. Now, let's look at worshiping God by going without eating. So if you're going to fast, this is what God does talk about about that. He says, when you go without eating, meaning fasting, don't try to look gloomy as those show-offs often do when they go without eating. I can assure you that they already have their just reward. Instead, comb your hair, you know, look good. Wash your face and look clean. It says, then others won't know that you are going without food. Okay, but your father sees what is being done in private, and he will also reward you. Now, is now this is what it's talking about: treasures in heaven. All right, it says don't store up treasures here on this earth. It says moths and rust can come in and destroy them all, and thieves also will break into your home and steal them or place of work. Instead, store up your very treasures in heaven. It says, where moths and rust cannot destroy them. And thieves can't, cannot break in and steal them. There. It says, your heart will always be where your treasure really ultimately is. Okay. And then, God says something about light, how we are supposed to be. It says, your eyes are like a window for your body, or to your very soul. So like some translations say, it says, when they are good, you have all the light you need. Okay? But when your eyes are bad, everything is dark. If the light is inside, the light is inside you is dark, you surely are in the dark. Okay? Now, God goes on and says something here in Matthew chapter 6 about money. Verse 24 says, You cannot be the slave of two masters. You will like one more than the other, or be more loyal to one than the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Okay, that's true. Now worry. He says something about worry. That's what Jesus is saying here. I tell you not to worry about your life. Don't worry about it. He says, don't worry about anything. Don't worry about having something to eat, to drink, or clothes to wear. He says, isn't life more than, isn't, there's a lot more to life than just food and clothing. He says, look at the birds that fly in the air. He says, they don't plant or harvest. They don't even store up any grains and barns. Yet your Father who is in heaven takes care of all them. Aren't you worth more than the birds? It says, can worry make you live longer? Why worry about clothes? Look how the wild flowers grow. It says, they don't work hard to make their clothes. But I tell you that Solomon did all his Solomon with all of his great wealth wasn't as well clothed as one of them. God gives such beauty to everything that grows in the very fields, even though it is there today and thrown into the fire tomorrow. He will surely do even more for you. Why do you have such little faith? Okay. It says, don't worry and ask yourselves, will we have anything to eat or drink? 
says, will we have any clothes to wear? Because only people who don't know God are always worriers. Because they're always worrying about such things like this. Your Father in Heaven knows that you need all of these very things. But more than anything else, put God's work first in your life and do what He wants then the other things will be yours as well. It says, don't worry about tomorrow. It will take care of itself. You have enough to worry about today. All right? And that's where we stop. All right, that was the whole chapter of Matthew, chapter 6. All right, it says, if you wanted someone to instruct you in golf or tennis, wouldn't you have chosen to hire someone who is the best at golf or tennis? And the answer would be yes. So the same also goes for your prayer life. It says if you want a better prayer life relationship with God, then why not go to someone who is who has excelled in the ministry of prayer, why not start by looking to the Bible and the Gospels and go to Jesus and see what he has there? It says one of the topics Jesus taught us in the Sermon on the Mount was prayer. Was That was the chief subject. That was one of the things he talked about. What principles for our prayer life can we find there? Well, prayer should be addressed to God and not to man. As we're reading about verses 5 and 6 of what we just read. It says, when you pray, don't be like those show-offs who love to stand up and pray in the meeting places and on the street corners. It says, they do this just to look good. It says, I can assure you that they already have their reward. Okay? says, when you pray, go into a room alone by yourself and close the door. says, pray to your Father in private, and He knows exactly what is being done in private, and He will then reward you for doing so. Okay? That's basically what it's telling us there. So this is not a combination of public prayer. No, Jesus prayed publicly... The Lord's Prayer was a public prayer. Okay. Now it does mean that we must always learn and remember who we are addressing our prayers to. Now prayer time is not a time to try to impress people, but only to communicate directly with God. Okay. We talk, all right, as our nature we talk in order to be heard by men, but they will hear, but God will not. So don't use frequently words in your in your prayer time. Just say it right to the point, and and that's all you need to do. All right. Now prayer is also this second point here. That prayer is also measured by sincerity, not multiplication of words. That's what we were just talking about. You know, how many words you use in a prayer. Look at verses 7 to 8. It says, When you pray, don't talk on and on and on as people do who don't know the Lord. It says, They think God likes to hear long prayers, you drawn out prayers. It says, Don't be like them. It says, your father knows what you already need before you even ask. Okay, so that's what we know about that. So this is not a combination of prayer. It says, later, when we look at the sermon on, on the sermon here, Jesus will recommend persistence. Okay, in some some instances, like somebody gets ill, 
You might say that again because somebody's ill in your prayer. It says it is condemning, you know, when you have empty petition. You know, don't you know, don't be um don't be praying to God for needless things. Okay. It also says it is also condemning the notion that best prayers are the longest prayers. That's not true. Okay. Point number three. Prayer should follow after Jesus' pattern, not our preferences, as noted in verses 9 through 13. Okay. Of what we just read. It says praise should always come first. It says respect for God's names, I mean his very name. Um, commitment to God's kingdom. You know, um, it says submission to God's very will. And then also petition is important, but should always come second. Okay. Now, Notice here, petition for the very provision of our daily needs is good to ask for. Petition for the pardon of our past sins is good to ask God for. And petition for the promise of future guidance from God is always good to ask for. Now, point number five. Prayer should affect our behavior, not just our mood. Like in verse 14. I want to read that to you again. Okay. It says, If you forgive others for the wrongs that they have done to you, your Father who is in heaven will also forgive you. Okay. But if you don't forgive, then God's not going to forgive you. And as I want to read that again, because some people will say they forgive you, but the funny thing I see is that some people in churches just keep talking about it and spreading it around, and that's wrong to do. If they forgive you, then they shouldn't talk about it or bring it up. Because true forgiveness is like that. If God forgives you with that measure, then you should forgive other people. No matter what they have done to you, you need to do the same back to them. Because that way God will forgive you too. All right. Now prayer may make us feel better. While that is welcome, it is not all there is to our very prayer life, okay? Prayer will affect the way we relate to one another as people, you know, in the body of Christ. It's as if we have received forgiveness from God, you know, just like I read a little bit ago, it will be difficult not to extend it To others, something is seriously wrong here if we cannot do this, because we should be able to do that. Now, in conclusion, I want to read this to you, and then it's an illustration, and we'll take communion, and then we'll be done. All right? It says, while prayer is a natural desire of the human heart, it often seems so unnatural says, we should not be afraid to accept instruction. says, like the disciples did when they were taught to pray, they, would, they cried out to Jesus, and they said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray. He will do that for you too, and you will be able to enjoy a lifetime of close communication and fellowship with God. Now, in conclusion, I want to read this illustration. You all might be familiar with Bill Myers. And some of you all may not be, because he might be beyond your time, but it's, this is pretty funny. Bill Myers, who had previously studied for the ministry, he worked in the, the, the Leyden Johnson's White House. Okay. At one meal, he was then asked to say grace for the meal. He said it so softly that the boisterous president, Johnson, said, Speak up, Bill. I can't hear you. And Myers replied, 
Mr. President, I wasn't speaking to you because he was praying to the Lord. So that's why he couldn't hear me. So as a little boy got confused saying the Lord's Prayer, instead of saying, Hallowed, Hallowed be thy name, he said, Howard be thy name. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes that can happen sometimes. But anyway, let's go to God in prayer for communion. And we'll take, we'll take the communion and then we'll have prayer for closing. And, we'll, and then we'll adjourn for the day. Dear Lord, please help fix our minds and our bodies and our attitudes and meditate and get our hearts and bodies ready for communion, to commune at your table so that we can have a better understanding on why we take these emblems to remind us of what your son did for us on the cross. And Jesus, in your wonderful name, I pray. Amen. So we have the bread. Oh, I broke. All right, we have the bread. And we have the grape juice. This green cup here. And we're going to start off with the bread. So get your bread together. And uh, salting crackers or whatever you have, if you're not able to make it with us this morning physically, you can do this on your spare time. And Jesus and the disciples were around the table, and he said, as they passed the bread around, he said, take this, this is my body. So they, he, all, they all, he broke off a piece, and all the disciples broke off a piece, as he says to us to break off a piece. He says, do this in remembrance of me, for this will remind you that I'm presently there with you. Now, he's not only there with you during communion, but he's also presently with you all throughout the week, as well as even before communion. So God is really present all the time. All right, it's not, it's not just during communion time, but he's just reminding us that, you know, like he did with the disciples, because he was dying and they didn't quite get two and two together, like we have it here. You know, when he's saying that to them, to remind them that every time you take this, you can think of me, knowing I was with you and all that, just like we can. So he said, do this in remembrance of me, and as the same promise to them is also extended to us. So let's partake this. I like it to the same as the bread. The grape juice is a symbolic is a symbolic um, is a symbolic um, meaning of the blood that was shed on the cross and it reminds us of that he'll be coming back to get us and then one day we'll be taking a, a new with him at the feast at the table and as we let's focus on that and as we, it serves as a reminder of what he's done for us that he has forgiven us for all our sins and that his blood was shed on the cross to remind us of that so let's do this in remembrance of him because of that very fact. Dear Lord, Father God, thanks for everything that you do. Please help that our church, New Hunter Church of Christ, will continue to grow and prosper. And thank you for all the things that you do, Lord. Please continue to bless us and bless our congregation. And thank you for all the blessings that you do bestow on us. Please help people have a safe trip home. And thank you for everything, Lord, Father God. And uh, please help people to prayerfully come back here tonight at 7 o'clock for our nighttime worship service, which will be at 7. I'm dealing with Talking to Your Kids, Part 4, Chapter two, uh, 3. And... Uh, It'd be wonderful to have people come for that. And our question and answer time as well. In Jesus, in your wonderful name, I pray. Amen. Go out and fight the devil. Remember two or more. You know, take two or more with you. 
remember I love you, and so, and even if I don't know you, I still love you too. So, uh, God bless you. I know my face is hairy. I forgot to shave this morning, but that's okay. Uh, I usually let it grow out a little bit because it is colder. I like to kind of keep it keep warm, and the hair does help. Facial hair does help. But anyway, uh, thank you for all your prayer requests, and thank you for the donations, and please help more to come in if you're able to help us to pay off our new computer system. And have a wonderful day, and God bless you, and Jesus in your water, and, and thank you for everything that everyone has done. Please get involved. Please subscribe down below. That's why I was pointing down there. Subscribe down below the video. And uh, do whatever you can to help us. You know, there's a lot of things we need. You can go to GoFundMe.com to see more about that. Anyway, see you tonight at six, at 7. And uh, can't wait to see you. All right, bye for now. Take care. God bless. If you like directions to get here before I go, you can call us at 804-789-9373. And our address is 7110 New Hunter Road, Apartment 423, Mechanicsville, Virginia, 23111. So you're welcome to call me. And I'm, I'm Evangelist Michael De Silva. My email is M-I-K-E-L-B-T-M-N at 71gmail.com. Thank you for all those. People that do help us, I'll see you later.